X Team Featurette. I'm Chris. Lewis Switcher on commentary. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right. Doing a review of The Gruesome Twosome from Arrow Video. Oh, boy. Blu ray release. Um, this was the first Herschel Gordon Lewis film that I've ever seen. I guess he's like a big splatter guy, which I'm, I'm, I was never really into like a bunch of splatter movies, but I don't know. I mean, I guess this, you didn't like this movie as much. I Not liked too much. It was, it was a little silly. I liked it because it was pretty silly in spots, but there was a character that neither of us liked, but we'll, you know, we'll get um, to that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, just to show off the, uh, you know, the release a little bit, um, you know, Arrow has this sweet, like, reversible cover art and everything, so the inside is, uh, I think this is the original art, so, um, the alternative art, I think, is way cooler, that's what we'll be displaying, um, but it was really weird, this actually, this release comes with, um, comes with some interesting stuff, it comes with an actual, like, full-length, uh, like, double feature. What was it called? Taste of Blood? We didn't watch it. We went to watch it. It was, like, two hours long. I was like, no thank you. But it, they said that it was restored from the original, uh, like, 35 millimeter, which is always a cool thing. So, um, it was supposed to be, like, they, I think he described it as, like, a contemporary Dracula film. So if anybody's interested in that, if you want to pick up The Gruesome Tucson, it has, like, a bonus on the disc. You can see, like, a little split. This, like, creepy... Creepy guy right there. <laughs> Creeping behind me. That's cool. Creepy guy right there. Creepy guy behind the camera. <laughs> Creeps everywhere. Creeps all around Creeps you. Creeps in this movie. So this this film, The Gruesome Twosome, starts off with, um, I knew nothing about it. You're like, oh, it's about hair or something. I mean, at the beginning, there's like two mannequin heads like talking to each other. I thought that was going to literally be the whole movie. We're going to be watching these two mannequin heads. <laughs> that kind of would have been cool, honestly. <laughs> so, like, it starts off with um, the two, the two like, mannequins with, like... And, and, by the way, this was, like, from when? Like, 1967? Yeah, 1967. Um, so, it was, like, way retro, like, real mod-looking. And these, like, creepy mannequins are, like, talking to each other about how, like... And it, it's not really the mannequin talking. I guess it's the wig on the mannequin talking. And it's it's... A wig made out of human hair, but it's not like an actual human hair wig. It's like someone's scalped head, and the scalped head is like talking or something like that. So it talks about how it got stabbed or something. I don't know. Like it talks about how it was like a the story behind how it came to be, which is I guess one of these girls that is killed in this movie. And then oddly, like in the end of like the intro, one of the mannequin heads gets stabbed and then <laughs> blood starts pouring out, and I was like, okay. This is something I can probably enjoy. Um, they, there's like a, there's like a omniscient, you know, voice that talks over it and tells us that it's a story about some, like these certain characters and Napoleon and then I think Napoleon's one of the first characters we're introduced to who happens to be a stuffed like ocelot or like a bobcat or something. He's a very a mountain lion of some sort. A very handsome. Handsome fella, in hmm. my opinion. Taxidermy was done very well. It was beautiful. <laughs> my favorite character. Check out my uh, Instagram for like a glamour shot of Napoleon. I was a big fan of his. So like basically, um, spoilers, the old lady runs like a wig shop and um, she pays very close attention to people's hair, obviously. Um, there was like this... I guess her ruse to, like, entice young girls to enter her wig shop and scalp them is that she has, like, a room for rent or something. Oh, come rent my room. Isn't that right, Napoleon? <laughs> and that was, like, the most annoying thing in the world. Like, the first couple times she did it, like, it's like, oh, this lady is a creep. And then she keeps saying, isn't that right, Napoleon? Isn't that right, Napoleon? Isn't that right, Napoleon? Napoleon, Napoleon, Napoleon! Napoleon? Her weirdo son is, like, I don't know, he's supposed to be, like, some sort of, like, Norman Bates-type character, like, you know, <laughs> just, like, totally dependent on his mom, and, like, he's, like, living in the back room scalping girls and selling them in the wig shop. Um, I it, do, I do like the music when, when 
When he puts somebody in, when she puts somebody in that room, though, when the music kicks in, I think that's awesome. Yeah, that was that was like super over the top. Like, and it start, or whenever they shut people in the room, like it starts off like immediately, like it's like it it's like pitch black, but then it shows you like the room. It's just like this warehouse. They have like it looks like a random you know back room in a store. They have like a bunch of stuff. So it's like. You could picture, like, being shoved into this room and, like, these girls are like, what's going on? And they're, like, looking around all freaked <laughs> out. And they just get come at by this weird dude. And, I don't know. It, it was it was interesting. Um, so there was, like, jazzy music throughout it. Like, I mean, like I said, it was, like, in the late 60s. So it was, like, sort of like a mod feel. The score was better than the movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um and I, I, I'm not sure, like, did it say if this was transferred from 35mm also, or was that just uh, A Taste of Blood? I think that was just A Taste of Blood, maybe. It still looked damn good, though, for it being in the 60s. Maybe, maybe it was transferred from 35mm. Um, but... There was some, definitely some lines and some, you know, some was, imperfections in the film, Yeah, you for could sure. tell that it was, you know, what that it, that it came from film... Originally, I don't know if, if they, you know, did that just for this release or what, but, um, oh my gosh, though, there was parts where the sound was just absolutely horrible. Yeah. Um, like the, the, not, you know. The dialogue the being dialogue. recorded was really, really muffled and sounded. It was like they were talking through like a tin can or something. Like it's it, definitely in mono, not stereo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're like, you know, an audiophile, this might, you know, be like... <laughs> annoying to you but um i mean it definitely didn't take away from you know it was comprehensible like i you know it was just kind of like well and it was only in like certain spots it wasn't the whole film but um and then like so it, to go like the whole mod thing like there was you remember the um scene with like all the like the slumber party in the girls dorm and oh yes they were like sitting there i thought they were eating like um i thought they were eating ice cream or something but it was actually like kfc drumsticks yeah like, big a bucket of chicken on the bed bucket of chicken on the bed they were having like a kfc dance party yeah they were, like, listening to some getting down with the colonel oh my gosh it was it was uh pretty nuts and then something comes on the radio that there was like you know girls missing and whatever and obviously yeah. you know has to do with oh by the way did you see my new wig and blah 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 you can take it to this wig shop and take a swatch of your hair and she'll match it exactly and yeah it was pair it with a drumstick with from kfc get some grease in your wig <laughs> yeah so um one of the girls though like one of the girls in the dorm was like she was like a little detective, and she was a sleuth, and she started following me around this creepy old janitor. Um, that was pretty fun. I liked her character. Um, I liked all of the characters, really, except for that old lady wig shop chick with the Napoleon. You hear that, Napoleon? Isn't that right, Napoleon? And she had, like, this horrible, like, mid-Atlantic accent. Like, right, Napoleon? It was... Chalkboard scratching pitch. Yeah. It was... I mean, I don't know. It was, it was an interesting character. She was definitely unforgettable. I will give her that. Um, but then, like, um, how about like the drive-in scene where they just randomly, like, all the characters go to this like drive-in, and then like the actual like screen becomes like the screen on the drive-in, and that was probably my favorite part of the whole movie. Like, that was pretty rad. That was the best part. Rad, it was yeah. so trippy. It was like a close-up of these people's like hands on like a table. And, like, the guys, like, just, like, there's one of, like, a guy, like, and a, and a woman, like, touching a glass of beer or something. Just, like, touching the glass and just doing odd things with <laughs> it. And then he starts, like, fondling fruit. <laughs> he's just, like, touch, like, there's a bowl of fruit and he's just oddly touching it. Like, it's just so, like, it's unnatural the way that he's, like, touching this fruit. And then he, like, smashes, like, a plum or something in his <laughs> hand. And it's just, like, what is happening? It's, like, some weird, some weird, like, art house stuff. Um, but I really enjoyed it. That was really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so if you want... Remember with the chips? He just, like, takes, like, a handful of chips and crunches them in his hand. And it was just, like, what am I watching? But I would go see that in the drive-in if it was showing. Definitely. Um, the kills were, uh, 
for a splatter movie, there wasn't that much blood, I thought, you know, like, there was a kill, I'll describe the kills, so, you know, if you want to pick this up, like, skip ahead, but it was, like, the first kill was, like, with just, like, a regular old knife, they, they scalp the girl, and I, apparently, scalping means instant death in this movie, um, so, you know, you get scalped, you die in, like, two seconds, that was interesting, so the first one was with a knife, the second one, you know, the son was a good boy, so he got upgraded to an electric knife. That was exciting. And then the third one was a machete to the to the stomach. Um, so it was it was a little, you know, I wasn't expecting that, but um, it got the job done. So the who wasn't the old lady like? Didn't the old lady die at the end? She got like a wig pin to the eye. <laughs> yes. And then. Yes. Um, our friend Napoleon ended up in the trash where he belongs. Yeah. And then wonderful. all is well in the world. So, I mean, it was fun. I would watch it again. It was it was just like a silly time. It wasn't that long. How long was this thing? It was right, like 80 minutes or 72. something. 72. Yeah, okay. 72 minutes. Yeah. Mono audio for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Um, but there, there are a bunch of like really cool um, special features on this release. Uh... But we watched the one with like the intros from him um, talking about yeah Herschel himself right you got a little introduction yeah he did there. intros to both of the films I believe yep, and yep. Uh, that was really cool watching him talk about like his he seemed know, like a legit pretty cool dude yeah and um, so that was really cool there are introductions to the films from him there's um, archive audio commentaries from both films by Herschel Gordon Lewis. Um, and then there, there's so many special features, just like, um, from him, Lewis discusses some of the pitfalls of the blood and guts business. He did say, what was one of the things he said about, um, the, the Taste of Blood movie? He said, like, it, or was it a gruesome twosome? He said, like, if, about splatter movies, if, um... If people say that it's it's all right, then that means you did really good. Yeah, like if they walk out of there and they could stand it, you know. If they like, could stomach it. That was pretty damn the good. The average for a, audience. Yeah, that was pretty damn good for a splatter film. Yeah, so that was really cool listening to him talk about how it it's like difficult to make these types of movies because there's a very niche audience for it, for sure. Uh, it says trailers and radio spot, reversible sleeve, which I showed off. And, um, yeah, I mean... It was, uh, it's a pretty cool release. I, I think, you know, we're going to check out the, uh, the Dracula movie on here for sure. But, you know, I, you know me, I can't watch any two hour movie, just any old day of the week. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot out of me. So, <laughs> um, you know, we'll get to it one day, but this is a really cool release. I suggest it if you're into like, you know, splatter movies. I'm not, but this was really cool. Thanks for watching our little review. Um, I'll be doing more reviews of other things. Gonna review Dario Argento's Bird with the Crystal Plumage coming up soon. Have some other things from a uh, Arrow video to show off and some more surprises. So subscribe. Subscribe to Lewis Switcher Show. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Wait, what is this? Oh, right. Herschel Gordon Lewis presents Blu-ray disc disc <laughs> compact disc. Whoa! Uh huh. <laughs>